watched that special uh, panorama last night, your jaw might still be on the carpet. Extraordinary yeah. revelations. Latest Partygate news that whistleblowers have told all night of rather all night lockdown parties inside Downing Street, where staff were sitting on each other's laps despite the social distancing rules. Yeah, and um, on the front of the mirror this morning, another photograph. Um, why did the Prime Minister deny it? We knew parties broke the rules. That is Downing Street staff saying that. Mm. So let's speak to the Environment Secretary, George Eustace. He joins us now. Very good morning to you, Mr good Eustace. Good morning. Good morning. Um, finally, we get the Sue Gray report, but we've had enough evidence for our own eyes and our own viewers to see that there were parties, despite the fact that the Prime Minister said there weren't. Did he lie to Parliament? Well, look, the Prime Minister gave an account of what he understood happened from the events that he himself attended. Uh, he gave that account at, at Parliament. He's explained that uh, on multiple occasions. And, of course, he paid the fixed penalty for, for the event that the police judged, uh, you know, was also uh, wrong, where he uh, is alleged to have broken the rules. And so... And then the police have also investigated this, obviously, thoroughly and have issued lots of fixed penalty notices in relation to these events. There's no new need to use the word alleged, George Eustace. He was fined for breaking the rules. That's right, he rules. was, yes, and he accepted that and, uh, and, and, and he also paid the penalty uh, for that. He paid the fixed penalty notice. Yeah, well, now, that was the event would, where it was his As birthday. you would expect. The trouble is you would also expect the Prime Minister not to break the law, and yet he has done. And in the photograph that we have just seen, um, that was the party... November the 13th, 2020, the one that, when he was asked about it in the House of Commons, um, he gave this account. Will the Prime Minister tell the House whether there was a party in Downing Street on the 13th of November? And, and, and whatever happened, uh, the guidance was followed and the rules were followed at all times. You see, there was, wasn't there? And he must have known it, cos he was there and he had a drink. Uh, so, for him to say that there was no party and the rules were followed when the police have already issued a fine, at least one fine, for that particular event, uh, it, it looks like nothing other than a lie. Well, the police obviously have not issued a fine to the Prime Minister in respect, you know, of that event. Know that, but that, but that, that, that's a given. Now, can you just respond to the point? But they have, it, it, well, he's, they, he's they have issued a previous... fine for that event, yes, is somebody Rachel's else. point. We understand that. And, and, look, the police obviously have looked at all of the evidence. They've taken witness statements. They've spoken to everybody uh, who was there. Um, they're better placed to judge um, when rules were broken no, look, and, and sorry, when it's appropriate I'm sorry, to Minister, issue this a fixed is no, I'm sorry, this is flannel. Um, what, what, we're, what we're saying to you is that there was a party. It was an illegal party. The police have decided that it was illegal. Mm. Even if it wasn't illegal, it was a party. It's crystal clear. We've all seen the pictures, and God knows what the Sue Gray report's going to tell us about in a couple of hours' time. Mm. What I'm asking you is that when he... Your Prime Minister, when your leader said in the Commons there was no party and the, no rules were broken, it, it looks to most people like a lie. Well, I, I don't really accept that. And he's explained himself several times that on these events that he did attend, including that one on the 13th of November, that, I understand, was a, a leaving... Uh, that was somebody leaving the yeah, work. Leaving, leaving party. party. <laughs> well, well, his understanding was that this was in a working environment. At the end of the day, he turned up to um, uh, say a few words for a departing member uh, of staff. Now, look, the police have obviously looked at the evidence of what then subsequently happened at that event, and obviously it went on uh, much longer, probably when the Prime Minister wasn't there, and therefore they did issue fixed penalty notices, it appears, in some of those cases. And all I would say you, is the police see, have looked at this. Did you see Laura uh, Kinsberg's panorama last night? Did you happen to see it? I didn't, no. I okay. was uh, working last night. All right. But obviously well, I've had an account was, it was of, full of uh, what it It was full of jaw-dropping statements uh, from people who work inside Number 10. They were reporting, as we said in that link there, people sitting on each other's laps, people standing with their arms around each other's shoulders, um, coming in the following mornings to find litter bins overflowing, overflowing with empty wine bottles. I mean, the culture of partying during the lockdown at Number 10 was off the scale. Well, clearly, it's absolutely wrong, and the Prime Minister acknowledged that. The police have investigated this very thoroughly and issued, you know, dozens of fixed penalty notices in respect of this. 
the Sue Gray interim report published a couple of months ago highlighted that there was a problem uh, with a, a drinking culture and that that boundary between, you know, what was acceptable in a, a work environment at the end of the day and what then became, it's very clear now, subsequently parties, was, was unacceptable and there were failings that enabled that to happen. And she's made some recommendations. She'll probably be making further recommendations in relation to that today. Um, your colleague, senior Tory Mark Harper, said yesterday, I'm fed up with my colleagues who are being asked to go out on TV and saying things that are frankly ridiculous and defending the indefensible. Not being straight with people is a real problem. And that's why I told the Prime Minister he's not worthy of his office and should go. Do you feel like you're defending the indefensible? Well, look... Everyone in government, from the Prime Minister down, absolutely recognises uh, the anger that many people will feel when they see fixed penalty notices being issued, when they see photographs like we've seen published in the, the last couple of days, and perhaps more to be published in that final Sue Gray report. Absolutely, everybody understands that. But for me, as a, as a cabinet minister, there are also important things that the government is trying to grapple with, getting our country back on its feet after the pandemic, dealing with uh, rising um, costs of living pressures on people, um, dealing with the situation in Ukraine and many other events that we have to turn our attention well, what to. What a terrible shame. It is your prime minister who is distracting you from mm. all that. Um, it's 8.37. Unfortunately, George Eustace, we have to let you go. You have other interviews to do. Well, I have to say, thank God for a free... Well, I have to say, thank God for a free press, because we wouldn't be talking like this if it wasn't for the Daily Mirror's scoop a few weeks ago, if it wasn't for ITN News's, ITV News's scoops and getting those pictures. We wouldn't know anything about it, and there would have been 